Namaskar and a very warm welcome to CIET NCRT's live phone and interactive program. My name is Tanvi Khurana and uh, this is a maths class for all the ninth class children. You're watching us on Evidya channel number 9 and uh, we are going to discuss real numbers and this is the second part of this chapter. So if you have uh, not seen the first part, I would request you to please watch it on our YouTube channel that is NCRT official. It was done earlier and uh, now we are going to continue the same topic which is real numbers part two and uh, we have a guest with us let me please introduce to you our guest and she is mrs Bina prakash ma'am a very warm welcome to you hello good afternoon dear learners good afternoon to you too ma'am on the behalf of each and every learner who is watching this program ma'am is a senior pgt in mathematics from campion school bhopal and she'll be answering all the questions you have so you can uh, call us and raise your questions our number is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine if you want to email us your queries the email id would be dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in and before we begin this conversation and I would like to ask ma'am that what exactly did we do in part one before beginning the second part I have an announcement to make that is regarding India's G20 presidency. Well we are extremely proud of the fact that India assumed G20 presidency and would convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country this year that is 2023. A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam or should I say the world is one family. With that, let's begin this conversation and uh, ma'am, would you like to sum up what we did in part one? Sure, dear. Yeah. Now, in the last class, we started with the first chapter that is number systems. So in this, what we did was, we started with what were the first initial numbers that you studied with. That is natural number, set of natural number, which is also known as counting numbers. So the number, natural numbers, they start from 1. 1, 2, 3, these numbers, they are said to be counting numbers or natural numbers. Then we have one more number added to it, that is 0. So that makes it a set of whole numbers. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, they are all whole numbers. Now further to it, we have added few more numbers because we came across certain situations where in certain situations we got some negative numbers like when you add 3 and 2, you will get 5. That's a positive number. But when you take up the difference, that is 3 minus 2, what do you get? It's 1. So 1 is a number which is in the set. It's either in natural number or in whole number. We can say it as a natural number. But if you take 2 minus 3, what do you observe? 2 minus 3 happens to be minus 1. So it is not in the set of natural numbers nor in the set of whole numbers. That means that's another set of numbers. So we had this negative numbers also. So the negative and positive along with 0 together made a set, new set of numbers that's known as integers. So we have these type of numbers. Now beyond that, now, what I have made is, you find there is a number line. This is known as a number line, right? We have a number line. Now, in this number line, what we did is, we divided this number line into different parts. So, this start, this is one point. This is, we have divided the whole number line into different divisions. Now, we have this as a in-between division. That is, we named it as zero. On its right, all major divisions, we named it as 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have all the integers marked on this number line. Now, it's a line. Line says there are too many points on it. There are many points, in fact. So we can further divide each division into further more parts. That this are divided into three parts. This is divided into three parts. This is divided into three parts. So each division has been divided into three, three parts. So that way, if you want to take up one particular part, like here, you can see the letter D. What does D represent? D represents the 20th part on the left-hand side of 0. So it is 20 on 3. And since it's on the left-hand side 0, we have the sign negative. That is, on the left-hand side of 0, we have negative numbers. On the right side of 0, we have positive numbers. So the point mark D is having the number 20 on 3. Likewise, the mark point mark E is on the left-hand side of 0, which is the fourth division from 0. 
hence its value will be minus 4 upon 3 and likewise it moves on so there are certain points marked on it <coughs> similarly in the next number line we are divided each into six six parts each major division see this is o, zero this stands for zero on its right one division which is having six parts one two three four five and six parts one two three four five and six parts so each is now divided into six parts so now you find out which part is the point a what do we read do we read we'll find out the number of division it comes out to be minus it comes out to be 15th division on the left of zero so it's minus 15 on 6 and similarly b is minus 4 on 6 now what are these numbers how have i written these numbers they are written in the form of division 20 on 3 that is 20 is divided by 3 so you're dividing it isn't it 20 is divided by 3 what is this 20? It's an integer. 3 is another integer. So we get a new set of numbers. 20 on 3 minus 20 on 3. We get a new set of integers. And these integers, when on dividing, we find that they come out to be in a decimal form. And this decimal form here is minus 6.666 6, 6, 6, 6, minus 1.33344 on 3. So these are different representations of the numbers. So such numbers with, uh, where rational numbers so what are rational numbers the numbers which can be expressed in the form of p upon q where p and q happens to be integers and p and q have no common factor that's the important thing that we need to know in it okay now we have just a minute yeah there is always a problem in this ah. now so what we see that each number that we have apart from the integers can that is in between divisions on the number line can be expressed in the form of a p upon q where p upon q where p and q they are co primes so such numbers were set of rational numbers so we have discussed all these things and then rational numbers when you divide it actually like 2 upon 5 when we divided it we got the answer as 0 0.4 3 upon 4 we got the answer as 7.75 5 upon 6, we got the answer as 0 0.833, 0 0.833 and so on. That means these rational numbers are expressed in the form of decimals, which can be a terminating decimal or a non-terminating decimal. Right? So we have expressed a rational number in the form of terminating and non-terminating. Then after that, we took the uh, rational numbers which are in the decimals which are in the form of 0.25 we took converted it into the form of p upon q so till here we discussed now what we are going to discuss here today is q we have seen that a rational number p upon q is either in the form of terminating decimal you can express it in the form of terminating decimal or non-terminating decimal fine terminating decimal or non-terminating but if it is non-terminating, then this is actually a recurring decimals. It becomes recurring. That is, it repeats recurring decimals. It is this re recurring decimal. So you have a number expressing expressed in the form of decimals as terminating or non-terminating, but recurring. So don't we have another set of numbers, decimal numbers, where we can have term non-terminating and non-recurring? So we have another set of numbers apart from rational numbers, which is known as irrational numbers. So such numbers cannot be expressed in the form of P upon Q because their decimal representations are non-terminating and non-recurring. So such set of numbers is known as irrational numbers. Now, how did we come across this set of numbers, irrational numbers? That is, when we took this right angle triangles sides, we found that when we take up a right angle triangle whose one side is one centimeter the other side base side is also one centimeter we found that the mm -hmm. hypotenuse of that right angle triangle happens to be root two so this is a special number which is not in the form of p upon q such numbers are said to be irrational number so what do we find in this such set of numbers they are numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of p upon q they are in terms of decimals expressed as non-terminating, non-recurring numbers. So I have taken up certain numbers. See, root 2 is a number, root 3 is a number, 0 0.31221122. 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2. It is a non-terminating number. 
But what else do you observe? The decimal after the num num number digits after the decimals, they are all non-recurring. Non-recurring means they do not repeat. It is three one, then it is two two one, one one two two, three twos are there, then one one. So this pattern is repeating. That means it says that there is a pattern which says that the digits are not repeating. Likewise, this set of numbers thirty two point two zero three one four three three one. Four four three three. So again, you find that they are non-terminating as well as non-recurring. So such set of numbers are known as irrational numbers. But when you look at this number root four, we find that root four is nothing but square of two. So we have it is equal to two. That is, we can find the square root of four, which is equal to two. Two is a rational number. It's not a irrational. So if we can express any radical sign size numbers in the form of a rational number, then it is not a irrational number, right? So finally, we come to this definition of real numbers. Now, what are real numbers? Real numbers are numbers which are either rational or irrational. They are rational or irrational. So I made a pictorial representation here. See this rectangular block. This rectangular block. is one part and this part a pinkish shade here that is another part so this set contains some numbers that is known as irrational numbers now what is in this rectangular box is q q is the representation which is discussed in the last class q is the representation for rational numbers so whole num every number inside this rectangular box green rectangular box is a rational number every number on this part is a irrational number so what we find is there is no common region between this rectangular part and this triangular region there is no part common which says that no rational numbers are irrational neither irrational numbers are rational so that's what is very clearly expressed in this figure now in that rectangle of rational numbers you find there is another figure inside the rectangle and that's a oval shaped figure just see it's an oval shaped figure which is inside the rational number so what does that represent integers that is you have in rational numbers set of integers and inside this oval there is another rectangle that represents whole number and inside that rectangle another oval that's a natural number so sub sub smaller set that you find here is set of natural numbers then comes set of whole numbers so how do we read this that is every natural number is a rational number every natural number is a integer but is a natural number a irrational number is it connected to irrational number it's not no ye alag alag figures hai na ye so every rational natural number that is n the representation n you can see is not in this set that is irrational so if natural numbers are not irrational numbers but natural numbers are whole numbers natural numbers are integers natural numbers are rational numbers but not the vice versa that is is every whole number a natural number nahi hoga kyunki we have certain numbers outside this set which happens to be whole number but not natural so what is that that's the first question here you see that's the first question that you see in this objective type that is every whole number every whole number is a natural number it is not so because it's a false statement why is it false because whole number contains zero zero is not a zero is not a natural number is not a natural number so therefore it's not correct okay now every integer is a rational number every integer is a rational number so what do you see from this figure that is up outside this integer region is a rational number that means every integer is in this rectangular region which says that yes every integer is a rational number now the other way every rational number is an integer no because rational number inside it is in integers but not outside so there are few numbers outside this oval of integers which is not an integer for example what is that example 2 on 3 is a rational number 2 on 3 is a rational number but not an integer it's not an integer fine right? so this picture will help you to answer these questions so please make sure that you understand this figure some rational numbers are irrational numbers how is it possible rational numbers are a different set it's a different figure it's a different region irrational number is on the other region hence they are not 
the same. So therefore, it is not fine. Now, next last is natural numbers are irrational numbers. So as I've said, natural numbers come under different group. They come under rational numbers, so they cannot be irrational. So we are able to answer this question. Fine. So I think by this time you all have understood what real numbers are. Now we move on to the next thing that is identification of rational numbers or irrational numbers between any two given numbers. Like you have this two and four. So let's first find rational numbers. How do we find rational numbers between two numbers? The number given is two and four. We have to find rational numbers. Rational numbers means if you remember on the number line, if you look at the number line, it says that we have to divide this number line into different parts. So if we divide it into different parts, let me have this as two part. So this is three part and then this is four part. That is in between two and three, four, we have to write certain numbers, which happens to be a rational number first, then a rational number. So how do we take up this? The first method that we can take is we do, what do we do is we add the two. That is first method, first number. Let's have the first number. How do we take up the first number? I'll do one thing. I'll take up the addition of the two. I'll take up the addition of the two. What is it? Two plus four and then take its average. What is two plus four? Six. Its average is three. So isn't three lying between two and four? So that's one set of one number. Second number, how do we take a second number? Second number is I'm identifying a number between two and three. So what I do is I'll again do the same pro take up, same procedure. That is I add up the two numbers, two and three, then divide by two. So what do I get? Five upon two, that is 2.5. So that's a number in between two and three. So we got two such numbers, three and 2.5. So what we find here is we are working, we are taking up certain steps to answer this question. How can you avoid this and get an easier way? That's the second method that I'm telling you. What you do is, as we all know, as you know that every rational number can be expressed in the form of a decimal. So what you're finding is, you're finding rational numbers between 2.0 and 4.0. So extend these numbers in terms of decimals. So what are the numbers that you can find? What can, what all types of numbers are there which will be lying between the two? Won't 2.1 be in it? 2.3, 2.4, 2 2.5, 7, 5, 2.7, 2.9. See how easily we are able to write so many numbers, 9, 9, 9, 9, then 3, then 3.1 and so on. So if you express these numbers in the form of a decimal, you find that there are infinite numbers between two rational numbers. So it's not just one set of numbers. You can always write any number of numbers between two rational numbers, provided you express in the form of decimals. Mm -hmm. So this was for rational numbers. Now, how about irrational numbers? How about irrational numbers? Apply the same method. Apply the same method. So what you do is construct a irrational number using these decimals. Construct matlab, you make it. How will you make it? What you do is write this number. That is 2.1 extend in the decimal part randomly in any pattern. The pattern should explain that it is extended randomly. Like I have taken up 101, take up two zeros, one one, three zeros, one one one, and so on. Isn't it sufficient to explain that this pattern is going to extend infinitely? Yes. And such pattern of numbers is known as irrational numbers. Okay. Like this, you can use any other number. You can go in for 2.9, 9, 1, 9, 9, 9, 1, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 1, 3, and so on. So this pattern says that we can e easily write any number of rational numbers or irrational numbers between two given numbers. Okay. The numbers 
Yes. Ma'am, we don't have any more time left and I think uh, the concept of rational numbers and irrational numbers is very much clear to all our viewers, to all the ninth class children. Ma'am, I would like to thank you for taking our time for explaining the concept of uh, na real numbers to all our uh, viewers, to all our children. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, dear learners. Thank you. Thank you to all the children as well for being a part of this program. I really think that you enjoyed this chapter and uh, if in case you have missed it, you can always watch it again. So before we leave, I have an announcement to make that is regarding NCRT textbooks of this new academic year 2023-24 and the books are available throughout the country. These textbooks may be purchased directly from the NCRT sales counters which are there in New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Guwahati and Kolkata. The sales counters will be functional on all the weekdays including Saturdays, Sundays and gazetted holidays from 9.30 to 6.00 p.m. And uh, you may also place the order for the books online from our website that is ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in the, and these books will be delivered at your doorstep for no extra charge for no delivery fee at all. And if you want the soft copy of the books, you can also download them free of course from NCRT, Diksha or e Shala website and their mobile apps. And again, this would be free of cost. So if you want to know more about our authorized vendors, then you can go to the website ncrt.nic.in and uh, you can just read the list of the vendors. So thank you so much for joining us with this particular program. Upcoming next is a special program. It's a series on ET and ICT tools. Stay here and keep your questions ready. I'm Tanvi Karana. I'll take a leave of you. Please take care. Namaskar.